What do you got, Bill? Recording in progress. All righty. There we go. Good evening. We have a quorum. It's 6.30. We'll call the meeting to order. First up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. Mr. Iser was first in the door. Mr. Iser doesn't seem to be with us anymore. I think he's here for the uh, small, the small, small subdivisions. Let's move on to the next one. He'll, I'm sure he's going to be back. He probably uh, has the wrong key. Oh, next. Um, next is uh, Larry, who I believe would be Larry Tuttle. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm uh, here to just have some uh, questions or get a sense of direction that we might follow for uh, the East Street property, the corner of East and Russell. Uh, it currently has an existing farmhouse on it. Uh, the recent widening of Route 9 has uh, taken some of the frontage and now uh, part of the house is actually in the Route 9 uh, easement or uh, right of way. And the uh, owner is also on the on the meeting listening in. And he's been approached and, and has participated in some of the historic commission's meetings. And they would like to retain the original house, if at all possible. Would, would you uh, like we, me to bring bring up your uh, drawing? Yeah, that would be helpful for those that wouldn't have won't know what I'm talking about. I guess. Or you're free to share it too. Well, I don't have it in a position to get to it quickly. Um, if you can bring it up, that would be helpful. What we have shown here at the at the property is two overlaying footprints of the building that is uh, proposed by the owner. Uh, one meets fully the zoning requirement of the 50 foot setback being a corner lot on both East Street and Russell, uh, but it creates a pinch point of a full 24 foot wide driveway that would be at the rear of the site. Uh, we would propose a consideration of if we use the 50 foot setback from the prior width that was required by Route 9 Russell, we would be able to bring the building in that crosshatch up to closer to what is consistent along Russell uh, for the, the frontage and facades of the buildings. It would also give us a, a relaxed situation for the driveway that we propose to be moved from its current position to the southernmost part of the site, approximately across from the bank driveway. This would also provide certain amount of safety for the person coming and going from the site being more remote to the actual intersection. So we're, we're, we're at the point now of putting together the documents that we would submit formally for the hearing and site plan review for the town. Uh, and we're weighing the amount of technical work that has to happen and we would like to know if the board could give us any indication as to an acceptability of the proposal that we reduce the setback along Russell to 31, almost 32 feet to the current widened location of the street. Uh, that would be, again, 50 feet or very close to 50 feet from the prior uh, edge of the of Russell. 
So, can I ask a couple of questions here? Sure. Yeah. Are you planning on raising what's there and building all new? Well, that is the the next level that we're considering. The, the we've shown a program and have a building footprint and building schematic that is reviewed by the owner and is is acceptable to his program that does not use any of the existing historic structure. We are, the proportion that we have in the easternmost end of the building is an approximate uh, dimension as the original farmhouse east, fa east facade. And we would attempt, if physically feasible, to either relocate the structure to that location or uh, approximate some of the detailing from that that original building to appease some of the historical. So, so the building that is virtually a foot off of Route 9 right now would disappear? Yes. Boy, that would be nice. That building is... Well, the barn the barn is not salvageable on any any chance. Uh, the the farmhouse the easternmost part is the wider portion, and the western part that actually crosses into what now is Route Nine's easement uh, is also in such disrepair. And the historical commission has already. Uh, indicated to the new owners that they had no they have no interest in retaining that portion of the building okay well before i say any more i'll listen to what the rest of the board has comments on sure anybody everybody <laughs> oh the uh the parking on east street uh what's this the setback there the setback there is uh, approximately 20 feet to any of the, the paved area so that there'd be some low planting and landscaping along there. But we wanted to keep it open for visibility, for safety in and out of the property. But still the parking would be uh, too close to East Street, according to the zoning regulations. That would be new, new parking. So... Would this be considered a hardship? Well, that would be going to the zoning board of appeals. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we we could. But not for, first, not first for the parking. We, we, Park. One at a time. Okay. Yeah, the parking is. Uh, we prefer it to not be in the fifty foot setback, but that's a preference and not a requirement of the bylaw. And, and certainly I could comment that if we are able to position the building as we would like with that 30 foot setback to Russell and maintain the 50 foot setback along East Street, we could modify the parking layout so that we would not, not be imposing that onto the project at all on that East Street. East Street side, or it would be nominally uh, two to four cars that would be staff, not necessarily public. So Just we could, uh, we, pardon. Ahead. Larry, this is always a tough one because you're, you're asking us almost to design something that uh, we don't really know what's going to exist. So uh, we can give you some ideas, but it's not gospel, remember? Oh, no, no. But it is it is important to know if that consideration of the 30-foot setback from Russell is something that the board would be receptive to and not the 50-foot. Yeah, we can't that, give that to you. Okay, we can't. Okay. Yeah, well, we can't. You could go to the ZBA. Okay. You probably have a decent argument that the shape of the lot after the takings yep. has created a hardship there. Okay. 
but um, but you have to go to the ZBA for that. Well, okay. I think if you were to go to the ZBA and to get their blessing on it, a variance, um, I don't think we would necessarily have a problem with it in that location, uh, given that a number of other properties are sort of in the same boat, that they started out with a 50-foot front yard set back and a lot of them don't have it anymore. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this owner uh, was uh, negotiating his act, his uh, uh, receiving of the property. He had an acre plus, and he's now below an acre in property that we're we're trying to work with, and and that is the the biggest issue that we have, and we are still maintaining other zoning requirements of the uh, a percentage of open area that we're not encroaching on that that uh, size. We are showing parking here that is much greater in number than the zoning requirement. So we could forgive some, certainly some of that that is less uh, appealing if that along East Street is is encroaching not in the spirit of the zoning reg. I've got a question for the board. Seeing that this building is, I'm mean, granted it's a it's a tear down and a new construction. However, because it is far less non-conforming than what's there, would he even need a variance? I think he still needs it for the setback. Well, the setback right now is in Route Nine. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And well, the new set. The new setbacks are extremely less. That's my question. Would he need a variant because he is, granted, he doesn't conform to the zoning bylaw, but the existing structure, well, the existing structure is in Route 9. Yeah. This so, would be not. I think it's new construction, and he could fit it within setbacks. So if he wants to move it, I think he does need a variance. So that's the 50 foot front yard. No, that's the 50 foot front yard setback right there. So right. it yes. is possible to meet it. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. Once you tear down that, the grandfathering is the building. Once you tear it down, you lose all your grandfathering. Okay. Right. Fair enough. But if we if we chose to utilize the uh, main or the original house, we would be then uh, able to utilize that grandfathering. Is that correct? If I would think so, thing. Larry. Yeah. I mean, it's in, in very oh. poor, poor shape. I'll, and the issue that I have with just telling the board that we're going to use that house and then increase the square footage of the building, the new code would have us having to bring that original house up to the current energy code, which would be... Yeah, what, you're going, to call, you're going to build to the new code. I mean, right. if you were to go for a variance, like Mr. Dwyer says, you've got a pretty good argument Um to receive the variance. Okay. All right. Well, I don't want to take all of the, the open time. This was this is Larry. Larry, there's one. I have one more question. Yep. Uh, this is very similar to uh, Alina's. Uh, not similar, but uh, the fact that there was, you know, uh, encroachment on their parking, encroachment on their front yard setback on Route Nine, but they received a lot of compensation from the state that we weren't aware of at the meeting when we were dis discussing Alinas. So in as much as they have taken part of your building that uh, t was their compensation received? I don't know that. I can't answer that. Certainly uh, the the uh, current owner uh, hasn't given I me- I could um, answer that on that. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, <I laughs> That's the owner. Answer, no, not at zero. 
And I'll, I'll uh, make a disclosure here that I did represent the prior owner in the sale of the property to the current owner. And um, it was a it was a sale without any contingencies. So uh, I have no um, I, I, I profit in no way by whether this goes through or not. But I just wanted to mention it. Uh, however, the prior owner did. um that the compensation was to the prior owner and the sale to the current owner reflected that. Okay. So there was compensation. So the hardship would make it a little bit more difficult, but that, that was question number one, and we can't resolve that here. Question number two, uh, what will the uh, structure of the facility be ultimately used for? Will it be a restaurant? Will it be oh, it's, um, or what will it be used for? We are Hampshire Meadow Pediatric Dentistry just down the road in, on uh, Russell Street. So we're moving the office there. So it'll be an office. A dental office. <laughs> Anybody that, that drives so Hadley and has bad teeth is going to have no excuse with all the dentist offices we're going to have on Route 9. There are so. 12 dentists within walking distance now on Route 9. But we are one point. of the we are one of the only uh, pediatric dentists in the region. Like for example, right now Berkshire County has zero pediatric dentists taking Mass Health, so we're we're having four or five families a day come all the way down from North Adams, Pittsfield to oh. see us. So it's there are a lot of offices, but there's no pediatric offices. So it's okay. why we've grown so fast. Yeah, it, it, it was that was not a, a dig by any chance to anybody. I'm just saying that there's a lot of dentists and on Route 9 and people should have good teeth in Hadley. Yeah, Maybe it's Hadley. interesting. It's like, you know, almost in, in Manhattan or or all the we all get together at a corner. <laughs> We all liked it, or the same building. It's a good area for us. It's very central. Okay. Lived in New York. My dentist was in the uh, Chrysler building. It was a real pain getting there, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I appreciate the uh, the time the board has given me, and, and certainly I know uh, what materials and where to direct the, uh, the inquiry to uh, pursue this. So I appreciate the time. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. I saw that uh, Mr. I oh, Mr. Iser has rejoined us. Did you have anything other than the public hearing? No, sir. Uh, maybe a little lesson in pushing the correct buttons on my computer when you were <laughs> oh. looking for me. Uh, next up was is um, just identified by the initials M O. That's probably Matt Olszewski, who I'm representing this evening. Yeah, sorry, Matt Olszewski. I've got, okay. I've got two little girls uh, here we'll at home, so I signed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ed uh, Weigel or Weigel. Yes, sir. I'm listening in. Okay. okay. Um. Then I have a, I had a phone number. Yeah, that's still there. 978-257? Yes. 2207. Are you here for anything particular? You're on mute. Phone number. Whoever has the phone number, you're on mute. Do you have anything for us? And nope. then, um, nope. I was just Courtney going to. Just, Courtney just disappeared. Courtney just left. I don't know if she hit the wrong button, too. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, that uh, concludes uh, All right. people who are here with questions. Okay. Well, well, that will open the public hearing at a 640, after 645. The Hadley Planning Board will conduct a Zoom public hearing on Tuesday, December 19, 2023. We froze up to about to review the application of Matthew Finitive Subdivision at 21 at 21 Lawrence Plain Road. 
Uh, plans available by emailing planning at Hadley MA um, or published twice in the Gazette, November 21 and 28. Mr. Iser. I yes, believe. sir. Mr. Dwyer, would you please put the plan on the screen? Okie doke. Hang on a second. Okay. Recording stopped. Recording in progress. Sorry about that. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> right next to your screen. <laughs> All right. That's it. Okay. So I brought this before the board on an informal basis several months ago. This is 21 Lawrence Plain Road, which is just south of Next Barn Over Farm. Uh, there's an existing building house on the property, and there's approximately five acres of land there. The proposal is to create two buildable lots on a private road, waiving all the subdivision regulations so that the town will never have to take care of the road. Um, the existing house lot has 200 feet of frontage on Lawrence Plain Road and it contains 44,369 square feet. The 150 foot square required by the bylaw is shown in that lot. I have a parcel A uh, non-buildable, a parcel B non-buildable, and a lot number two, 40,508 square feet. When we, when I ran this by you before, a question arose as to why I wasn't putting lot two adjacent to lot one and if you can if you're able to read the topographic lines on this plan you'll see there's a pretty substantial hill there so we're trying to get away from the hill um we have town water here private sewer uh there's going to be the road surface is going to be start out as gravel i have a, a, a sure a detail of the road configuration, 16 feet wide, uh, pitching towards the south, towards towards the lots in question. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but we had a pretty substantial rainstorm the other day. And at, at the end of the rainstorm, I went down here just to see what things look like. There was no standing water anywhere. There is an existing farm road that goes to next barn over. I have no idea why they're using this property for that purpose, but they are. Uh, the soil is pretty sandy, very uh, fine. I'll call it sugar sand kind of situation. And there was a little bit of buildup of fine silt at the bottom of the road before it turns back onto next barn over property. My point is that drainage is not going to be a problem here. I have not proposed any drainage on this because of that fact. Uh, there's plenty of space for uh, rain storm water to uh, percolate into the soil and not cause anybody any issues. Um, there, uh, I will say that there is uh, just north of this on next barn over a similar situation to this was created 15 years ago or however long it was long ago it was where there is a private road to a, a buildable lot out back. Uh, and I think that's about all I can tell you at this point in time. 
just what one one comment, uh, Randy. I think you you I know you said private sewer is actually going to be a septic system, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all the pretty pink circles with crosses in them are perk tests that were done. Oh, and I will one last thing I'll mention. I have shown a emergency vehicle turnaround uh, so that fire trucks and ambulances, whatever, can turn around and go back out to the street if ever need be without having to back all the way out. Just as a comment, um, obviously I live near relatively near this and Mr. Eiser is right. This the biggest problem they're going to have on this property is keeping water in the ground above the ground because it's just, it just soaks in, it disappears. It does not stand around. Will the owner of lot two, uh, be able to maintain parcel A and parcel B so that it just won't become brush or I'm sure I'm sure he will, Joe. Uh, he owns a landscaping company. Okay. So yeah. I'm sure that he will keep it looking impeccable. Yeah. Okay. Other comments or question from the board? We only had one request to view the plans, and it was from the abutter who is also the beneficiary of a very small subdivision. And who is not present. So do we have to run the road by uh, the, the fire chief such that it, it will accommodate uh, a heavy fire truck? Uh, yes. As far as the construction ready. That should have all happened when I, when I, yeah, when I submit these things, Joe, I give six or seven copies. They're supposed to be passed out to all the various boards and committees and departments. So hopefully that's, it's been reviewed. Oh, sometimes uh, there has been a little delay in the response from that department. So uh, right. they've had I'll, six I'll, weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll verify with uh, Mike. With the police okay. chief, that it's okay. But the approval will be conditioned on approval of others anyway. So, okay. yeah. And, and what I've provided here, Joe, is what I, I do on all these. So it, they've seen it before. It's nothing new. All right. Any questions from anybody attending any audience? Mr. Quinlan, anything? <clears throat> no? Okay. You wouldn't know, Tom, if Mike has commented on I mean, I haven't got anything from him on it. If he's seen the plans or anything? I have not on this one. Okay. Other than well, that? Yeah, we've got the 20-day appeal period to deal with it. If it if it happens to come up, I don't no, think I mean, it will. But I, I can't does. imagine it's going to be like something going to overturn our decision. It's going to be a matter of, hey, Randy, can you do this to the road or do that to the road? That's all it's going to be. Yeah. So, you could if that, if that if that is the case, you could always come back and say, "Hey, Mike's requested a minor change of this or that." Yeah, no problem. I'll so. I'll try to catch up with him in the next couple of days. Okay. Yeah, okay. No. I am just uh, printing up the uh, printing off the motion. Okay. I'm gonna just mute myself. So I'll make a um, motion to approve the application for definitive subdivision uh, on the following conditions. Um, project satisfies the general purposes of subdivision control law and complies with the town of Hadley subdivision regulations, except as waived herein. Uh, board orders that work must be conducted in strict conformance with the um, survey plan um, we just had up, 
uh, because of the scale of uh, this uh, small scale of the subdivision, the planning board determines that it is in the public interest and not consistent with the intent and pur not inconsistent with the intent and purpose of the subdivision control law to waive strict compliance uh, to allow construction as shown on the reference plans. Um, the, no more than one dwelling may be constructed on each lot. No lot hereby approved may be further subdivided for the purposes of constructing additional dwellings. Um, layout of ways uh, has been designed for two lots only. An approval is limited to that number of lots. Um, the roadway has been designed and constructed in a manner that will be unacceptable to the town of Hadley as a town way and will not be presented to town meeting for acceptance. Um, three intersections and all points marking change of direction shall be marked by iron pins. All property corners shall be marked with iron pins. Uh, no issue. Um, and this approval is uh, oh, a prospective purchasers are cautioned this subdivision is adjacent to active farmland um, with attendant dust, odor, and noise. Uh, approval is subject to approval of other boards if and as required, including the Conservation Commission, the Water Commissioners, uh, Public Safety, um, any project changes directed to other boards must, by other boards must be approved by the planning board and shall not become effective until the notice of decision is referenced to the plan recorded at the registry of deeds. That's the motion. I'll second it. We have a motion a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, um, since Mr. Mo Mr. Dunn is not here, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Zagrodnik. Aye. Mr. Sarzinski. Aye. Mr. Maximowski, aye. Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Dunn is absent. So the motion passes 401. Very good. All right. Thank you all, gentlemen. And I know, Bill, when when the decision gets uh, brought to the town clerk and it's ready to be recorded, you'll let me know. I'll record it. Then I will put that on the plan and bring the plan back to you guys to get signed. Okay. Sounds Thank like Thank you very plan. much. All right. Merry Christmas, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you very Merry much. You Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Okay. Uh, so um, I see we have Courtney back. Did, well, no? She just disappeared. Okay. <laughs> doesn't like the sound of my voice um uh we have uh tom corbett with us tonight going back to administrative um he filed a revised set of plans for his battery only storage off of uh well off of huntington i guess right mr corbett question for you Good evening. Sorry, my I was on a phone earlier. I couldn't uh, couldn't figure out how to unmute myself. <laughs> um, did you actually file with the town clerk and get a signed application? I filed with the board here, and the um, my understanding was that I file with you. Then things get scheduled. Then I okay. file with right. the clerk. So okay, so you're 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 filing tonight, if that's correct. Yes, correct. Okay. Uh, okay, you are you're filing for something that doesn't exist in the zone bylaw currently. So we will schedule your public hearing for February twenty. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um. The board and the board can disagree with me if they think that I'm incorrect. The battery storage bylaw is close to being ready for our review, review, and it will certainly be ready for the annual town meeting. 
the way I understand it, because our current bylaw doesn't permit town a battery storage. I know there's a whole state laws and all the rest of stuff. However, the fact is it's not permitted right now by our prior town council's opinion. And if we hold a public hearing without being permitted, we have no choice but to say no. Mr. Corbett now has to sue the town. That's going to just put everything into chaos for I don't know how long. Three to five years. Yeah. So, <laughs> Whatever. Okay. He doesn't have to sue the town. He has the right to sue the town. He does not have the right to do it yet. It's not permitted by the bylaw. What we what I'm proposing here, just listen, just hear me out, is we will then publish the new by the, the notice of a new bylaw amendment in the newspaper. We'll do the proper notifications for the public hearing. We will hold Mr. Corbett's public hearing after that public hearing. Mr. Corbett, if the bylaw passes at town meeting, the effective date is the first date of publication in the newspaper. Mr. Corbett is applying technically, or the public hearing is after the uh, first publication. Therefore, we could hold his public hearing for the battery storage pursuant to the legal notice with the new revised battery bylaw. If it's the town law, you have town law. Town meeting approves the amendment and we approve Mr. Corbett. Everything is just kind of goofy, but at least it complies and nobody's suing anybody and it saves everybody a whole lot of aggravation. Does that make sense? I would say, Jim, that that is the direction that sounds the best. Okay. Because, I mean, you don't want to sue us. We don't want you to, we don't want to be sued. And if you sue us, you're really going to put yourself into a bind. A hundred percent agree. A big delay. And um, I think we're, the, my, the wording that I have for the um, revised um, solar bylaw is pretty close after talking. The big, my biggest concern is, fire safety and so the uh, I would propose that we while we're on it and I mean, it's, it's already it's on it's in the agenda so we can discuss it the amendment is to allow battery storage wherever large scale solar is permitted board have any comments on that I don't think it should be allowed there. I think it should be just allowed in industrial zones. I mean, I think two, two three weeks, two weeks ago, Jim, you ha were having serious doubts about the safety of this whole thing. And now we're letting Tom kind of urge us forward on it. I, I was working on it anyway. And my biggest concern is, is, is safety. And talking to the fire chief in FPA 55, addresses he thinks very well to all the knowledge to all the current um what's the right word knowledge on solar ba on, on battery storage for large scale right now the fire chief's biggest concern is not large large scale battery storage he says i think in fpa 55 and the electrical code pretty much address the controls and the placement of large-scale solar. His biggest concern right now is people putting battery storage in residences that is very... Um, you've got people, at least in large-scale solar, you've got, a, you've got a gentleman like, like Tom Corbett that has some experience, and he wants to do it right, and so do most of the other ones. In a residence, okay, it may want to get installed correctly, but do they take care of it correctly? And if it isn't, it actually, the electrical code actually requires if you have a battery storage in your house, that a sign be on your electric meter that you have a battery storage system because they can be dangerous to the firefighters. And, and the, uh, the, police, the fire chief's concern is that they are probably more of a concern than large-scale solar right now. So 
More to be revealed. So, yeah, Mike, what I'd say is, remember, this is a special permit. So that if someone wanted to put a, a battery storage facility in the woods in the agricultural residential district, <clears throat> we might look at it differently than the proposal before us, which is to put it in a um, a sand pit. Which is in the middle of the woods. Well, <laughs> it's, right? it's well screened. I mean, I mean, I had my first beer up there. I'm not proud of that. And it's in the middle of the woods, believe me. <laughs> also, aquifer protection. Yeah. Yeah. A, a lot of that is is will be addressed by the bylaw. Not everything, but a lot of it will be. Oh, it's, it seems like Eversource has got themselves in a pickle here. They want Hadley to write a bylaw to address their needs no. because of because of the electric system they set up in town, and. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not how it works. <laughs> well, I, I don't know so much if it's ever source as the state saying that you can't prohibit it. If we were to go to court with our current bylaw, we would probably lose. And Mr. Dwyer can, I'm not trying to play attorney here. We would lose hands down. And we would get a, a battery storage system shoved down our throat by the state. But well, we're not prohibiting it. Excuse me. I'm trying to head it off by getting something on the books where we have at least some regulation. Well, the state would never do anything like that, would they? <laughs> I know that. Oh, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Even if we have a never, I'm not yeah. going. So, I'm, I'm, I'm. I mean, we've been working. I've been working this for a while. I think after talking, like I said, to the fire chief and other electrical people, those were the biggest concerns I have, and. I think we may have something that is reasonable. It can it'll at least at least address a lot of the concerns or major concerns. There are probably some other ones that, well, the state is saying we're gonna I'll have to allow it. Mr. Tom, yes. You're muted. Sorry about that. I, I do see their concern. I went to a training a few weeks ago on it, and um the DEP or the environmental impacts on the you know, all this water would go in there. They don't like at this point, they're not designing them with like a dike around them or something to contain. If it was to be a problem, though, with the water, um, you know, the runoff from it, there is. They haven't looked into that. The regulations is is the environmental impact is kind of what the training I went to. They were saying, um, just that you know, little input on it. Yeah. No, I've I, I, I'm I I've, I've got an idea on the environmental. I mean, as far as I have an idea for that one that I'm, we're going to be incorporating, Tom. Every battery storage system will require spill containment. Now, uh, Tom Corbett, you mentioned in that brief note that you sent us that Eversource had completed their study. Is that a study rel relative to Hadley in this proposal? So that study is relative to this project in particular. Um, this project has been studied and verified by NAS by Eversource. My apologies. Um, and they, we are in discussions on how to connect at this point. Um, so things are progressing on their end. Um, and luckily, we've had a couple of years extension on that end to have discussions within your town and try and get somewhere and. I think we have a good path in front of us, like Jim. Could we get a copy it. of that study? I believe I sent in the, uh, I think the interconnection service agreement that would outline the results of that. I believe that I gave a one copy anyway to the planning um, office. I can get it digitized. I think Bill might even have that in his inbox. Yeah, I did send around a document that you uh, emailed in last week, I think. Okay, yeah. So the inter the interconnection service agreement should be included in that. It's a little redacted, so there's not a whole bunch of financial being thrown around, but um, it should give you the pretty good gist of everything. Um, the Podic substation 
is getting a pretty good rebuild that we have to wait for that to be completed. So we're working on that timeline now with that resource. Okay. I should be able to get the batter, the revised bylaw out to everybody probably by the first week of January. So within the next two weeks, we should have something to look at. Hopefully we can discuss it at our first meeting, maybe at our first meeting in January, or at least certainly for the second. Yeah, we'll have Ken with us at the second. Okay. Speaking of which, the uh, the filing deadline for the district local technical assistance grants was extended by two weeks. <clears throat> so I suspect they may not have results by the time we meet with Ken, but we'll see. Okay. Are we going to invite Al Norman for this? No. <laughs> uh, Al Norman, for those people who are not aware, wrote a scathing article against uh, storage facilities, in especially in the town of Wendell. Well, the, uh, the state will overrule him on that. I mean, his article was a good one. It was about a fire in California. I think it was California or Arizona, something like that. And he kind of just slept over the the uh, basics of it. I was actually able to go online and get the aftermath, the actual incident report created by, um, I'm not sure who there might have been NFPA, but it was actually done as a matter of fact, after the fire, detailing all the things that were done. And first of all, the facility was built according to all the regulations in effect at the time. Bottom line was there was a fire, it was put out, um, no signs of any smoke or fire. The hazmat readings were all within acceptable levels. They opened up the basically as a trailer where the batteries were stored. There was an explosion and four fire four fighters got severely injured. Luckily, nobody lost their lives, but it is four years later and not all of them have fully recovered yet. So those are the things that we want to obviously not permit. Well, when these things catch on fire, what are they spewing into the atmosphere? Is it Heavy metals? Is it lithium? Is it? I don't know that they're spewing anything into the atmosphere. If there is a fire, it's a different story. Yeah, that's what I mean. Normal use, I don't believe anything is going into the atmosphere. Maybe Tom could ex could would ex go explain more of that. I don't know. I could okay. definitely get into some detail on it if, if you want a little tidbit now. Um, each battery chemistry will be a little bit different in what it emits. Um, so there's different protocols that are in place on different types of systems as far as venting, um, lower limits on that in order for gases to escape. To comment on the 2019 surprise Arizona explosion, because um, that's what it was. It was an explosion. Those were habitable containers. Um, the industry is no longer using habitable containers. They're either one in a um, purpose-built NEMA rated container or two in a purpose-built building, which I think I've discussed a little bit in the past with you guys that I'd advise against. Um, the more current uh, Chandler, Arizona, uh, actually happened in a purpose-built building. The purpose-built building is kind of hard to see what's going on when it's filled with smoke, so they open up a door. They don't know what's going to go on. So the a lot of the outcome of the Chandler, Arizona, and the building um, and the duration on that came from the response that they've learned from in Arizona in surprise in 2019. So don't open the door. But now they don't have eyes inside and they didn't know what was going on. So there's, there's a lot to talk about for sure around all of that. But smoke, it seems like most of the reports that are coming back from some incidences out in uh, New York um, more recently, like this past June, um, that levels are coming back normal and they're not seeing anything um, off the charts. 
and surfaces are coming back clean. Not necessarily clean, clean, but nothing harmful chemical wise as far as um, parts per million or however the measurement goes. Okay. Okay. So that is our plan. Um, I don't I haven't heard anybody against it, so that's how we'll go forward. And uh, I'll go and collect the information in the town hall probably the next day or so and get moving and getting the revised, but we, we will make sure the bylaw is revised appropriately and get it out for first review by the rest of the board. Okay. Hey. Okay. Jim, just one question um, for application fee. You'll let me know, obviously. Yeah, it, it, it's point. probably going to be the way we've been doing it lately is the price of the publication in the newspaper and cost of mailing plus a small fee. Uh, we right. used to charge a flat fee of like three fifty. dollars um, In the last, well, two or three years, the legal notices in the Gazette have been running close to $500 for the two publications. So we had to do something to um, correctly charge. So that's the way we've been doing it. And we, we'll, we'll wait until the I get a price of the newspaper and I will put that those fees onto the uh, application and email it back to you, Tom. That sounds great. Okay. It, it won't affect any. Right now, we've got your schedule for 219. Was it 219? Uh, 221. 221. 221. And yeah, that will not, okay. that, that date sh should not change. Yeah, uh, understood. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I knew you had to calculate. That's all. I've been yeah. listening to you guys long long here that I get I know I have to wait for your number <laughs> yeah okay okay awesome thank Great. you yep. welcome um anything I have actually I have nothing else Mr. Dwyer um just see if Kayla is uh listening if she wants to if you want to uh, turn your camera on and say hi I don't think you <laughs> met everybody yet hello hi everybody sorry hi. turning on my camera pressing my buttons there can't see go. me okay she is our i guess administrative assistant lack of better term yeah Okay. Yeah, I'm the land use coordinator, um, so I'll be helping you guys. I'll also be helping with ZBA and CPA and continuing with conservation. Um, so I have met most of you. I haven't met you, Joe and Mike, yet, um, but it's nice to meet you both. And I was wondering if there are any tasks you wanted me to get started with, minutes, etc. cetera. Um, I did go to the CPTC conference. That was super helpful, and I learned a lot there. And, you know, just trying to get informed, learn about how planning board operates, uh, your procedures and, and the different ways I could help out. Okay. I would say the first thing is to uh, start going on the minutes and uh, Mr. Dwyer can direct you on that. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll sit down with you on that. Well, we, we did get a request Sounds for good. minutes from, I, I, you got that bill? I do. Um, okay. I'm not uh, quite sure. I'm not quite sure what they're after that because that was approved. But just for everybody's information, we got a request. Let me find it. Um, uh, records request. Here we go. We got a record request from Buck Buckley Richardson. Or records regarding the status and special permit for Hadleaf Cannabis, 251 Russell Street, Hadley, Mass. Records of any responses to exhibit one other than a response by Jennifer Sanders. Town of Hadley Planning Board meeting minutes for meetings held from January 15, 2023 to the present. That's only... I think he means, oh, from, okay. 
So for the last uh, 10 months, he wants any records of mentioning Hadley Cannabis in uh, our minutes. Well, he's going to get the whole year's worth of minutes. Okay, that's fine. Do you any idea what they're looking for, Bill? I don't. Uh, because it's been approved. They're operating. They requested a waiver of fees. But why would they be involving us? I don't know. Who, who's the... Well, this is the one that Attorney Albano was representing, wasn't it? Hadley Cannabis. Does he work... Did he... Does he work for... No. He went no? to... Um, Bacon Wilson. Bacon Wilson. Okay. And Tom, Tom Reedy came in at um, the last the last time that Had Leaf was in, he, he Tom Reedy was with them. Right. So yeah, and they, he simply said that you know, he requested that we not hold up the approval because he says if we owe the money, we'll pay it. If we don't owe it, we won't pay it. Which we thought was rather than you know, us trying to play good guy, bad guy. Let them go through whatever process they have to go through to find out if the if the agreement is valid or not with the Board of Selectmen. I'm not sure why Buckley Richardson would be involved, but is he looking for plenty board fees or is he looking for the fees that the town was asking for cannabis? Yeah, the the the, the agreement fees, I believe. I don't know. Community agreement. Uh, so. so. But get them the minutes, and they can decide what they or they can go forward with whatever their plan is. So, okay, I just mentioned that to everybody for information. I'm going down to Columbia tomorrow for a week for Christmas, so I'll bring you guys some coffee back. Ground, Jimmy, right? You want it ground. <laughs> well, if it, I can grind it if, it, if it isn't. Oh, you can? Okay. Yeah. I mean, if it's easier to give me the uh, beans, that's fine. I can get both. Kayla, you like coffee? You. You do? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to try to get on your good side because I'm eventually going to get on your bad side. So I'll <laughs> bring you some coffee. <laughs> I got sauerkraut for you, Mike, if you want some. Well, I'll be back up there in January. Well, I'll have it when you come back. Thank you. I'll, I'll swap your coffee for beans. Coffee for crow. Right, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, anything else for anybody? I have nothing else. I have nothing else. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. New Year. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you. Thank you, uh, 